Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. Sean Foyt here coming to you live from Capitol Hill in the heart of Washington, D.C. We're, we are sitting in Camp Ella, as you see behind me. Uh, this entire place is a miracle. Uh, I, don't have, I won't go into it now, but God's fingerprints are all over what he's done here on Capitol Hill, how we have this little sliver of real estate. And what I want to share with you today, I have an amazing guest, Thomas Teeple. And uh, this guy's testimony is one of the most powerful, profound, and it points to the very thing I mentioned in the beginning, the miracles of God and how much he loves this city, how much he loves this hill, how much he loves uh, what's happening right now with this revival movement um, in D.C. And, you know, a lot of times you only hear bad news coming out of D.C. You know, you hear depressing news, (laughs) you hear the chaos, the confusion, the darkness. Uh, But today you're going to hear some hope. And uh, so first of all, Thomas, welcome. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm so pumped you're here. One of the other reasons uh, I'm excited that Thomas is coming to us live today is because he actually helps steward what God is doing here in Camp Law. And uh, he's based here in DC. Uh, He works in government. He's amazing. Uh, God has this incredible calling on his life. But that's not where it started. So share with us a little bit of your journey. A couple years ago, what happened? How did you end up here? What God is doing here? Let's start from the beginning. All right. Well, really, it started at the Washington, D.C., the first Let Us Worship in Washington, yeah. D.C. And 2020. 2020. Yeah. And I went there being a weed addict, sleeping around. And how old were you then? I was 20. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, I was just doing everything but following Jesus. Yeah. And we showed up, and I remember watching rain fall down on top of this huge worship rally and a couple minutes go by and I realized that not a single drop had touched me. And so that's when it clicked for me that, wow, God is real. Wow. wow he is still moving in a corporate setting. That, that was one of the craziest things. Yeah. I mean, we were all seeing the rain. <clears throat> I mean, I got pictures and video of it and, and it was coming down, but not, no one was getting wet. It was just, anyway, wild. Yeah. Okay, so that was the moment. And so that clicked something <clears throat> in me and it really started this hunger in me. And so next thing you know, y'all are at West Palm Beach mm-hmm. in 2021. Yeah. And y'all had been there, I think, four days by this, by this okay. time, maybe, maybe six days. Yeah. And we, you, st- we, we launched the Let Us Worship uh, Revival Rally in a Hispanic church parking lot the height of COVID, like everything was shut down. We were actually getting fined every day. I think a couple thousand dollars every day for doing this. The city of Palm Beach was fining us. Um, And we never planned to go extended meetings. We only do one-off events. We go to another city. The power of God was so strong uh, and it was undeniable to all of us. We were like, there's more here. We got to go another day. So we ended up going for two weeks straight every single day thousands of people right crying out to god you came in day four yep yeah so praise the lord for y'all's obedience (laughs) but uh my dad Mm -hmm. asked me if i wanted to go to west palm beach and so we went and this is when i was still i had this you know revelation that the lord was real but i didn't have this personal relationship with jesus and i just remember being there and i had fasted two days not knowing what fasting was going to do for me i just heard that if you get yourself really hungry and the physical, maybe you can transfer it to the spirit and something will happen. Uh, but I had no biblical background for that, yeah. no, no biblical knowledge for that. So I, I just was like, I'm going to get myself as hungry as possible for this moment. Next thing you know, you pull up my dad and our family up on stage to pray for us and honor him. And mm-hmm. I just remember being up there in front of thousands of people. And the, a thought went through my mind of, man, when am I going to get down? I don't like being in front of this many people. (laughs) People are praying over me. This is crazy. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit just hit me. Wow. Struck me like a lightning bolt from the top of my head to the bottom of my feet. And it just felt like everything in my soul was illuminated. Wow. It just felt like the love of God wrapped me up so tightly. And I heard him say, I love you. You are my son. I love you. You are my son. And I just felt everything break off of me. Wow. Absolute freedom. I just cried out. I love you, I'm so sorry. I love you, I'm so sorry. And I cried out for what seemed to be like an hour. And if you look at the footage, all of the worship team came back up on stage and I was still like 
slain in the spirit. <laughs> and then, like they had to like, <clears throat> I basically looked around and they were like, all right, time to get off stage. <laughs> but Jay came up to me, he prayed for me and I got the gift of tongues and I didn't know what just happened. Yeah. I just know that I saw Jesus. Wow. And I heard his voice. Wow. And so from that point on, I mean, the, the chains of sexual immorality, the weed addiction, the vape addiction, everything was just broken off in the split second. Wow. And it started a worship movement down in Baton Rouge. And then by the grace of God, you know, I get an opportunity up here. And, and so that, that, so you were in college it, when this encounter happened? Yeah. Okay. And I left the fraternity and yeah. everything. Okay. It, it was just like blew my socks off. And then you went back to college, back to LSU. I did. And then started a worship I thing. did, yeah. What did all your friends think? It, they did not understand. <laughs> they had no idea. I kept telling them something <clears throat> happened, something happened. They're like, okay, okay, here, smoke yeah. this weed. I was like, no, I mean, I, I can't. I, wow. know, I know what I saw. I know what I felt. Right. You know, and I'm not at the mercy of someone with an argument. Right. You know, I have an experience. Right. And so started doing these worship nights on Thursday nights, which is when everyone goes out to the bars. Yeah. And so you can imagine I lost a lot of friends in yeah. that season, just very lonely. But the Lord was so generous and just continuing wow. to put people around me. Wow. It was incredible. And, and so I, this one of the reasons I love this story, and we're going to get to how you ended up here. Um, <clears throat> a lot of people see the altar calls. They see, uh, you know, the emotions. They see people crying. They see people out on the floor, they see, and they don't realize that every single one of those people are having a life transformation moment. They're having an encounter with God, and we have thousands of stories like this. And what happens nowadays is people get so dismissive because maybe they haven't had that kind of encounter. So they get dismissive, they think it's all hype, they think it's all emotion. I'm like, no, no, God is changing lives, right? Yours is an example, like he's doing this, he wants to do this, and this is why we, we, we give everything that we can to set up these kind of encounters so that people can get wrecked by the love of God because it translates into lives being changed forever, you know? And, and you were marked in that moment forever. I mean, it's like, what, what, what's interesting, I go back and thinking about the warfare just to get that parking lot at the height of COVID to want to worship, not knowing if anyone's going to come, not know most pastors are hard to rally because they were didn't want to be in trouble, and and we're getting fined by the city yep. and we're getting slandered online, but yet the fruit of the perseverance to press into God's presence is lives that are transformed. So I mean that I know it ministers to me, mm. you know, so much hearing that story. Okay, so you go back to college, <clears throat> you start these worship nights. What happened there? So I just started to see God move. Yeah. And he gave me two promises. He said, I will show up every week and revival will break out. And I remember the week before I moved up here, mm -hmm. the Lord put it on my heart. I fulfilled every single one of my promises, those two good promises that I gave you. Wow. And I was like, what do you mean? Because I thought revival had to be this, you know, huge, you know, 3,000 people coming to my house to come worship right. and an outpouring of the Spirit. And the Lord was like, no, not every revival looks the same, but the fruit is all the same. Wow. He said there were 15 people in that room that night, and every single one of them had revival on their hearts. Come on. It was incredible. They, they were one person, and then they became a completely new person. That's amazing. And he showed up week after week for almost two years. Wow. Every week, I, I remember I was doing this, and I was like, why am I doing this? Yeah. You know, there was weeks where only two people would show up. Right. Be like, what is happening? And then there would be weeks where like 40 people would show up. Right. <clears throat> and the Lord showed up every week and there was a testimony every week wow. of deliverance, of people being broken free of addiction, right. of people worshiping through, through death. Wow. It, it was just the move of God was just on that place. Wow. It was incredible. And so what was your kind of your, what were you in school for? What was your plan? And then how did that get diverted to come to D.C.? So I actually went <clears throat> to school for political science. Oh, wow. My first semester. Okay. And I didn't do good in a couple classes because of my political views, writing some papers on certain Explain topics. Explain that a little bit. Well, well, you know, LSU <laughs> is not as conservative as you might think. Yeah. So there was a couple papers I wrote on gun control, and we had a very liberal professor. And, yeah. and so I figured, you know what, I might as well just learn politics in the real world. 
you know, I'll go to college for marketing and do that. I was in a fraternity. I wanted to pick the next easiest major. <laughs> so <laughs> I wanted to uh, do something that I could just float by in. So I did marketing and then I got saved and I was like, okay, this is, I need to really focus on my academics. So I started, my grades started to go up and I was like, you know, I'm going to go to law school. So I started praying about that, doing the LSAT, all the requirements for that. I did everything except for my personal statement. And I was writing my personal statement. And for the life of me, I could not figure out why I wanted to go to law school, why I would be an asset to the Louisiana legal system. Wow. And the Lord just put it on my heart. This isn't what I have for you. Wow. And I didn't know. I was like, I just spent a whole year studying for this LSAT. You know, I put money into it, time right. into it. Yeah. I mean, it's like all this is wasted. He's like, this is just isn't what I have for you. And a couple weeks later, I met someone and he offered me an internship up on the hill. Wow. And then I thought I was going to go back to Baton Rouge. And next thing you know, he asks me to stay and work for him full time. Wow. And so the Lord just directed me. I mean, wow. I had my own plan. You know, yeah. you can guide your own, you can make your own course, but the Lord will guide your steps. Right. Yeah. Wow. And this coincided with, <clears throat> you know, we had gotten this place with a dream in our heart, you know, just for those that don't know, the day that I signed the papers um, for, for this, for Camp at Law, um, was the day that the Dobbs decision was leaked. So that day, this city was like on fire. I mean, it was like people Oof. were going crazy, crazy. And, and rioting, and it was insane because there was, the reality hit America that Roe v. Wade could be overturned. And so that decision was leaked and then we began praying and sending out teams of worshipers and intercessors 40 days in a row to worship and pray around the Supreme Court, which I believe was the reason we got, God had us here at yeah. that moment, right? Um, <clears throat> which by the way, Camp Allah, this, this name Allah comes from the Valley of Allah where David picked up the smooth stones to slay Goliath. So Allah literally means small place that kills big giants and we're sitting in a small place and we're going after big giants so anyway so then we connect and you're like man i'm coming up here i got some friends with me <clears throat> long story short you move in you start doing what you were doing in louisiana here let's talk about that so we started for the first two months we were doing a worship night mm -hmm. every week and we'd invite everyone we knew over right. and for the first two months I'll, i mean two people would show up every week and it was the most discouraging thing here here okay and so we were praying about that over and over we're and like, guys if there's anywhere that needs worship in the world it's capitol hill amen i amen. mean it, it is it this is a a, a spiritually charged environment yep. And worship. This is why we go into the Capitol. This is why we go in to the rotunda and we sing and we pray. We go to the steps of the, you know, uh, of of the of the buildings in the halls and the elevators. We want to see this place filled with the presence of God because there's such a war over that. So, a couple yeah, people are coming. Couple you're getting people bummed are coming, out. and I'm getting discouraged, <clears throat> and I'm starting to think like this isn't for me. Like, right. I'm I'm not living up to it, and I think the Lord was squeezing out every inch of pride in me. Yeah. Because as soon as I reached the end of myself, one week, 40 people came out of nowhere. 40 people came and it went from two people every week to 40 people. Now every talk week. about these people. Who are these people? These are people <clears throat> from churches all around DC. <clears throat> okay. We have, Some of them are work, people working on the Hill. Yes. A lot of them are <clears throat> on the Hill with senators, with congressmen, uh, DOD, DOJ, uh, Department of Commerce. I mean, we've got people all over lobbyists. Wow. Everyone is coming. Wow. It's incredible. That's amazing. All, all ends of the spectrum. Wow. It's incredible. And, and so, so then 40 people show up. Then it builds momentum. Like, what is God doing here? Like, sh share with these, everybody that's listening. Let's give some hope yeah. of what God is doing at Capitol Hill. God is starting to pour out His Spirit. I mean, little by little, there's pockets that, that He is just opening up heaven over. And I believe that this is one of those pockets. Yeah. We, we've had a vision that out there when we're sitting by the fire and worshiping, uh, just looking at the fire, the Lord will put a vision on my heart that fires like that are going to pop up all around D.C. Yeah. And yeah. so our vision is to, to mobilize. Mm -hmm. We're partnering with churches doing prayer walks around the Senate buildings. Yeah. We're doing outreach to the homeless. 
we've got homeless people just showing up in the mornings. <laughs> I mean, like people are just showing up and we're able to feed them, give them blankets. Yeah. Like it is incredible what God is doing. And it's no striving whatsoever. Yeah. We're just watching God continue to bring people here and to continue to pour out his spirit. Yeah. And so we are really praying for more worshipers to come here yeah. to lead worship. We want to do prayer marches yeah. around this capital. I mean, just like marching around the walls of Jericho. Yeah. We want to be able to do that once a week. Come on. Once a month. Yeah. yeah. However the Lord wants to do it. Right. We just want to continue to submit to his will. And, yeah. and he is doing incredible things. And it's just I mean, out of nowhere, boom, wow. taken off. And, and th this is what's so encouraging. It's like th these, these folks, we were here last night <clears throat> worshiping. This whole place, I mean, this is not a big place, right? This is D.C., <laughs> was slam-packed with people pressing into worshiping God. And I had my guitar out, and we were just doing just like really what, how I grew up leading worship in a house full of people singing to Jesus. And the hunger and the people pressing, it was like, you, you reach these places where it literally is a dry and thirsty land and people just want to drink, yep. you know, of, of, of the presence of God. And so last night, I mean, nobody wanted to leave. Everyone just wanted to hang out. It's a place of community. It's a place of hope. It's a place where God is showing up and miracles are mm -hmm. happening. People are getting delivered. I mean, I felt like last night there's such a heaviness that comes on this city as these people. I mean, these are people that are working in all of these departments mm -hmm. of the government, you know, and they get weighed down and they get anxious and they get depressed and they get lonely, but they come into Allah and they remember why God sent them here. Yep. They remember, oh yeah, this is the brook where I pick up the stones. Like I am a giant slayer. That's why God yep. sent me here, not to just end up in this system, you know, in, in this governmental system but no, 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 I am a revivalist, mm -hmm. you know? Share with me a little bit about maybe just some testimonies of what God's done here, how it's affected people on the Hill. Yeah, so we've actually started sharing mm -hmm. testimonies every week. And one of the testimonies, this sweet girl came and it was after I shared my testimony and she was telling me that after she felt like she finally forgave God for taking her father. And I was like, well, what do you mean? Explain that to me. She said. I was sitting there worshiping and I felt like the Lord told me to put my two hands out, which is what her dad would tell her to do when he would come home from a trip to give her a gift. Yeah. And she put out her mm -hmm. hands and she heard the voice of the Lord say, I am your father. Mm -hmm. And she just began to weep wow. and realized that she has a heavenly father yeah. that meets every need that she wanted her past deceased physical father. Wow. to care for. So wow. we have that. We have, like I said earlier, one morning we do a, a prayer every morning from 6 to 645 for revival in DC. Yeah. And we've got people gathering for that. This homeless guy just showed up. He wow. said, hey, I heard that y'all are worshiping here. And out of nowhere, I was just like, come on in. He ended up joining us for prayer. And he's my age and he's homeless. Wow. I mean, it's just terrible the, the way that the city has put people in such terrible positions. Right. But we worshiped with him, we prayed with him, we were able to feed him, give him a blanket to go on his wow. way. I mean, we've got people who are just falling out in the spirit in here. <laughs> Joy is just being let loose in this yeah, place. People yeah. are, are getting drunk <clears throat> in the spirit. It's incredible the deliverance and the breakthrough that is happening. Yeah. It's so awesome. And, and then they're taking that joy and they're taking that breakthrough and they're going back into their jobs. Yeah. They're going back into the Senate building, into the House building. They're going back into the Capitol. They're going back in their different departments. And really, that's the dream. Um, you know, and what, what I want to do is just, uh, firstly, I want to thank so many of you out there that have been praying for D.C., that have been praying for Camp Allah, uh, that have been journeying with us, those of you that have even donated to help make this place possible. We covet your prayers and your resources, and we're so grateful, even as we launch into this new year with crazy high expectations, you know, of what God can yep. do. I mean, I don't, coming out of that meeting last night where this whole place was packed full, it was like, I wish every news camera in America, you know, could see and share. Of course, they won't. They don't want to share good news. But if they broadcasted to America that there's a group of revivalists that are gathering together every week and every morning and praying in, people would feel a little more hopeful. You know, God is writing a story in this city. And the media might not be telling it. We're going to continue to tell it. 
This is why you gotta share this podcast out there to everybody you know, everybody that's even political, and the, especially the grumpy political people. You know, they need to hear this, yeah. that God is writing a story, he's moving through young people like Thomas and his friends. It's happening in little places like this, like Camp Law, and it's infecting, uh, you know, the offices of senators and Congress members. And after, after we leave today, we're gonna have members of Congress in here. We're gonna be praying over them. We're gonna be ministering to them. Like, this is, this is what we're about in this season. So any last words? And then I just want you to pray hope yeah. over America from DC. Yeah, the, the image that keeps coming <clears throat> to my mind is this truly is a house where people are gathering and they're having their feet washed by Jesus. Wow. All the dirt of this world is, is, attract, is coming on to us and attaching yeah. itself to us. And this is a place where people get their feet cleaned. Wow. And all that mess, all that junk, all the, the depression, the anxiety yeah. that this city, the striving that this city just puts on our shoulders, Jesus is taking off. Come on. Every time people walk into this house. Come on. And so, I mean, I just encourage y'all to continue <clears throat> to support this place. There's just so much being done in this place. So many souls are being touched. Come on. Just down at the supermarket on the corner. I mean, we are evangelizing to all those people and they're showing up to worship nights now. Come on. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's incredible what the Lord is doing. So yeah. I, we really appreciate your prayers and your support. Um, it has impacted me greatly. There's yeah. been so much deliverance in my life, yeah. so much breakthrough in my life. And um, it's such a blessing to be here. Come on, man. Well, pray us out. Yeah. Pray that hope from Camp Ewa. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for <clears throat> this place. Lord, this place that is a costly sacrifice to you as 2 Samuel 24, 24. As David, he offered up a costly sacrifice to you and you moved in a new, in a, in a new and an exciting way. Lord, we just believe that you are gonna bring your fire down on this house. We just believe that this fire is not gonna be contained to this building, but there's gonna be fires that pop up all around DC in yeah. the name of Jesus. Lord, we just believe that your spirit is touching the corners of this, this nation's capital. Heavenly Father, I pray that you would raise up <clears throat> Davids, that you would yeah. raise up Gideons in this city, Lord, to, to be baptized in your spirit, to be baptized in yeah. boldness, and to take your spirit into each and every corner of those Senate buildings, of those house buildings, of that capital, Lord. Would you continue to blow on the fires of our souls, Lord? I just pray that we would let everything be squeezed out of us in this season. God, that it would just all be about you. Would you allow us to reach the end of ourselves so that we can see your glory in this city? I pray that in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 This is amazing. Thank you guys so much. Again, Camp Allah, if you want to find out more information, you can go to holdtheline.live. Holdtheline.live. You can go to seanfoyt.com. You can find it there. We're going to be here every week, pressing in. And, uh, be expected for good news, more good news from DC to come. Yeah.